Welcome to Firing Line. I'm Mike Kinsley of the New Republic magazine. On September 6th, George Bush became the latest in a long line of presidents to, de to declare war on drugs. The previous war on drugs was declared in 1982 by President Reagan, who put George Bush in charge of it. Undeterred by the results of that war, Mr. Bush says that this time he really means it. One man who thinks the Bush administration definitely does not really mean it is William Von Raab. For eight years, Mr. Von Raab was U.S. Commissioner of Customs in charge of the attempt to keep drugs from coming across America's borders. In August, he got canned by his boss, Treasury Secretary Nicholas Brady, for, among other things, making too much noise about what he sees as the lack of seriousness in our approach to the drug problem. <clears throat> there are lots of things Mr. Von Raab thinks we ought to be doing that we are not doing. For example, he thinks we should be shooting down planes that are suspected of carrying drugs across our borders. He thinks we should offer multi-million dollar bounties for international drug kingpins. He favors trade and aid sanctions against drug-producing countries, which is, of course, the exact opposite of the Bush approach, which is to give aid to those countries to encourage them to stop using, producing drugs. And he thinks we should, American, we should send American troops into Colombia to wipe out the drug cartel, whether the Colombian government is us there or not. William F. Buckley, Jr., of course, is famous for thinking exactly the opposite, that the only sensible solution to the drug problem is to legalize drugs and let people suffer the consequences of their own folly. Mr. Buckley, one thing you and Mr. Von Robb might be able to agree on is that George Bush's program is basically phony. And I think one proof of that is the incredible modesty of his goals. He wants to reduce drug use by 10% over two years, 50% over the next decade. <coughs> uh, drug use has, has dropped, car cocaine use at least, has dropped by half in just the past two or three years. I think he's setting us up for a George Aiken solution, as in the Vietnam War. Come the next election time, he's going to declare victory and go home. Well, uh, Mr. Rabb <clears throat> has said that the, uh, the drug war is, is, is winnable, and I think that's interesting. But I also think it's interesting that only two things were said on the Bush night of any particular interest, and they, they were almost entirely unnoticed. The first was when the president said that um, under, under certain circumstances, having isolated the drug laws, we would then proceed to execute them. <clears throat> Question how uh, the 1988 uh, uh, law seems to me uh, rather difficult uh, to use to man uh, genocide against well, warlords. It's, it's worse than that. It's yeah. turned out that the Justice Department has already acknowledged that any drug lords that are extradited mm -hmm. will not be executed because they will only be given the strongest penalty that they would have gotten in Colombia, which is 30 years. That's part of the extradition treaty, though, isn't it? Well, regardless, it yeah. means that if any drug lord is, is actually extradited in a formal way, <clears throat> he won't be executed. Right. Well, what about an American war, uh, uh, drug lord, of which there are plenty? Uh, what I found interesting was that if you get serious about something, you do talk, t start talking about capital sentences. Sure. Uh, and yet uh, uh, our structure is such as to make it almost inconceivable that any man will fry for the mere act of um, poisoning 100,000 children. Well, I think that the capital punishment, I think, is a great thing. And I think the best part about it is to take them off the streets and we wouldn't have to worry about them yeah. anymore. But I don't think that it's anything other than a sort of political posturing. I mean, it's like wearing a certain color uniform. Right, and, and, and ac to. accepted as such. Nobody the next day, e even the anti-capital <clears throat> punishment lobbies weren't mobilized because they considered it so ephemeral a threat. Right. Okay, that, that was the one interesting thing I thought. Uh, then in Senator Biden's um, commentary, he said all the things one would expect a Democrat to say, not enough money, and look how much we're spending on B2s. Uh, um, but uh, the interesting thing he said was that, uh, oh, yes, of course, we ought to have a strike force. Right. Uh, presumably to move into uh, Colombia, Peru, Bolivia, Pakistan, uh, uh, India, uh, not Vietnam, because we're not allowed to go to Vietnam. That's, that's bad. But um, Passports uh, all those are other valid for Vietnam now. <laughs> <Sorry, that's> a... <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, <clears throat> and that was given no attention. Now, is the Democratic Party, in your judgment, uh, serious about the drug war? Because my judgment is not. I'm not sure that either political party has made a decision to be serious. They've certainly mm -hmm. both decided that it's a good political issue. Yeah. 
I think that Biden is serious because he sees that the way to, one of the ways to get George Bush is to come around from the right. Mm -hmm. And that is to be tougher than, than Bush. But tougher. how? Well, one of the ways is to state up front that we'll send troops into Colombia, which Bush has been unwilling to do. But do you, really, secondly, do you really think that would carry, money. that would become a conceivably a democratic platform? I think it could carry the Senate, and I think the House <clears> is questionable. <throat> Don't forget the Senate just recently passed a law giving Customs and the Coast Guard authority to shoot down planes, mm -hmm. which three years ago was regarded as madness. And so my idea that Mr. Hensley talked about earlier has now passed the Senate, passed such people as Biden. I'm not saying that Biden voted for it. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. So I think you're going to see a lot of people in the Senate willing to set up some very, very tough approaches and treat this more like a war, which is not being treated like right now. I suppose the only thing they wouldn't go for is for an SDI system to shoot down the planes, right? <laughs> not, unless, not if it could be used against the Russians, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, well, the, the, the question of, um, of seriousness uh, runs into two things you recently said. One of them quotes that we have not made a dent in the U.S. drug supply, and the second that the war is winnable. Now, uh, I have been more impressed by the first than by the second statement, in part because having tracked the rate of federal expenditures from $4 million by Lyndon Johnson to $4.4 .4 billion by Ronald Reagan, and yet seeing the price of cocaine diminish, which means more of the stuff is coming in, it seems to me that uh, it is a responsibility of a conservative analyst to say what kind of things are counter-gravitational and won't uh, work. Now, nobody knows more about the porosity of our borders than you do. But are, you, are you prepared to say that you can actually stick enough thumbs and all No, I didn't say that. There are a number of pieces to the so-called war. One is to do something mm. to the drug lords and to production. Another one is to <clears> tighten <throat> up the border. Mm -hmm. What you have to realize, and what most people don't know, is that, that the interdiction effort was pulled by the Congress from the administration over seven years, and it was never really properly supported because no one really wanted to do it because they didn't think it was really necessary and they thought it was too expensive. Well, tell me why. Are you, are, are, well, I don't know why. I think it, why is because... Because you have said that. The Treasury doesn't really want to do it, the state doesn't want to do it, and the justice doesn't want to do it. Because it's a why? tar baby. No one wants to get their hands stuck on the drug issue, be identified as somebody that says that it can be beaten. Even the Bush strategy, as it set forth, is not one that says we're going to win. It says we're going to cut down by 10%, which is going to happen automatically. It's like we will reach Mars. Right. Yeah. And so uh, no one wants to get involved in it. I mean, Baker doesn't want to get involved in it. He doesn't want to be the Secretary of State that is wrapped around the axle of international negotiations that are gummed up by uh, drug problems. Uh, Brady really doesn't know what's going on. And he's worried about savings and loan, and he doesn't want to be bothered with well, someone he else. Be, yeah. Thornburg, on the other hand, wants to be president. Yeah. And he doesn't want to be the attorney general that announced that he was going to do certain things and then failed to do them. So what they've done is they've set up a strategy that sounds good and is good, but has enough uh, sort of incomplete aspects that, that the blame can be shared among Congress <clears throat> the judiciary and the, and the executive branch, and no one can be held accountable. Because if someone is held accountable, they're at political risk, and politicians don't like that. Well, let, let me ask you why uh, so bright a guy as uh, Bill Bennett, whom you admire and, and I admire, uh, why is he underwriting a scenario that is as synthetic as you insist this one is? No, I didn't say it was synthetic. I think the scenario is good. I don't think it will be carried out. I don't think the money is sufficient. And I don't think the bureaucracy will support it. We've already seen the first undermining, and that is all of a sudden drug kingpins won't, won't be executed because the Justice Department has looked more carefully and they've discovered with a charge for 30 years. You mean foreign drug, foreign kingpins, drug kingpins? Well, they're the drug kingpins. I mean, they're the really serious uh, players in this. They're the ones we've got to get rid of. The State Department, on the other hand, has too many other balls in the air, mm -hmm. and they don't want to have their debt negotiations with Mexico skewered because of, of a wrangle over, over the drug traffic through Mexico. So they're trying to keep that away from us. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, is this a rational or an irrational position? If you were Secretary of State, you would say, okay, we've got a drug problem over here. We've also got a problem of uh, 85 million uh, Mexicans living in poverty and crowding our borders. 
there, is, there are certain diplomatic requirements in coexistence uh, which perhaps um, take a higher priority than keeping these drugs out. Is that a rational position, or is that, in your view, an, an evil or non-rational That's position? the big unanswered question that I have from George Bush's speech. Mm -hmm. Did he raise the drug issue <clears throat> higher on either the domestic or the foreign policy agenda? Mm -hmm. Now, when Secretary Baker and Secretary Brady go to Mexico, for example, do they feel that dealing with the drug problem is equally as important as the debt problem. Mm -hmm. Up to now, it hasn't been. As a matter of fact, the State Department put out a notice about two months ago about which I complained, in which they actually listed drugs as ninth, below Afghanistan, below international debt, below the environment. And so the question is... There's actually such a list of There is such a list that went to our embassy... Can't believe it. ...and which it was listed ninth. And it was put out by the USIA, yeah. which, of course, the yeah. main State Department disclaimed recently, said, well, that was USIA, but that's not, that's no yeah. way to... My, my shock it. is not over it's being listed ninth. My shock is always being listed at all in terms of priorities, because that's, uh, uh, may I say so, dumb. Uh, that is to say, Afghanistan is a discrete problem, uh, and Afghanistan versus drugs is, is not the way to go about things, is it? Well, I'd like to see it listed one, because unless it's listed one, the kinds of, of discussions that take place internationally <clears throat> won't result in, in tough policy. Well, but you can't list it as number one, say, over world peace, can you? You wouldn't threaten to bomb, uh, to drop an atom bomb right, over well, Medellin, I... so it's not really one. Uh, it's, it's just very high up. I think it is, world peace is not an issue that's typically found on an agenda. I mean, you go down and you talk to a, a country about debt, about trade, you don't say, let's talk about world peace. They do in the United Nations, I thought. Well, I mean, That's the United Nations. By the way, we point to the great <coughs> United Nations uh, declaration <coughs> as a great accomplishment. But th that's the sort of accomplishment that we're looking at. None of them have any teeth yet. No. And that's the problem. That's why I say there hasn't been a war that's been fought. It's winnable if you fight it. But it's, it, if you're not doing anything, then, then it's silly to say that it's winnable. Well, let, let me ask you, uh, since you know... Uh, uh, a great deal about this. What kind of authority um, could the president give, as distinguished from Congress, to the so-called drug czar? Uh, you talked somewhere about making a few phone calls and saying to the uh, Justice Department um, uh, uh, and saying to the State Department, "Look, God damn it, oh, I'll cooperate you, with Bennett." There's, uh, there's the red book called the National Drug Strategy. The president could say to Bennett, "Everything in that book has been approved." You are authorized to cause it all to happen. Uh, this, can you say that without congressional ratification? Yeah, absolutely. <coughs> He's not doing that. All of it's executive. Mm -hmm. Because let's, it says in the book that drugs should be raised as a priority on the State Department agenda. Yeah. Well, Baker basically has taken the position that the drug czar has no authority in the State Department area whatsoever. Now, he won't say that publicly, but that's his position. He may be happy to talk to Bennett, and they may have some sort of general agreement, but Bennett cannot say to him, when you go to Mexico, I want that drug issue to be put right at the top of the agenda. It just won't happen. Uh, Bennett cannot say to uh, Transportation Secretary, I require that you get a law up to Congress which would require the revocation of driver's licenses using the Federal Highways Fund or whatever we use for the 55-mile-an-hour scheme can't do that either. So he has no power. All he has the power is to convene meetings and to so-called coordinate. As a matter of fact, just recently, John Sununu was interviewed by one of the sort of television types, and he absolutely ducked the issue over whether Bennett had even greater authority than Thornburg in this area. So you're going to see a continuing battle uh, among the bureaucracy over who has the right to determine policy in this area. <coughs> That's very bad. Yeah, yeah. Well, not, um, I, I understand your point. Uh, recently, you complained that, uh, by contrast with all these meetings we're having all over the world about things like Cambodia and exactly, Afghanistan, yeah. we've, never, we've never had one about drugs. <coughs> but Mr. Bush said there would be one on drugs. Within a year. Now, can Within you believe year, yeah. that? Within a year. Mm -hmm. Colombia may not be here in a year. You know, we may be holding a meeting in which there's no Colombian government at all. I mean, I don't think we have a lot of time in Colombia. I think that, that, that the Colombian government, as it is, or what it is, is up against it. They may survive. They may effectively put down the drug barons. I don't think they're going to. And I don't think we can take that risk. 
I think we've got to go in and support them. I think we've got to get Barco to ask for help. I'd like to see it be a multinational task force going in there. But if we can't get that support, I think we've got to provide our own forces and just go knock those guys out because you can deal with them. I mean, they're not all powerful. They're not gods. They're just another bunch of crooks. Have you, have you thought through the, uh, <clears throat> the question of the international rubric under which we would proceed with such action? Um, yes, would, would, you I appeal to, would you appeal to that article in the United Nations that talks about self -defense? I would use the same rubric, whatever it is, and I don't know what it is, that we basically have used with respect to terrorism, mm -hmm. in which we've taken the position that we can go in and surgically extract mm -hmm a terrorist camp yeah. mm -hmm. uh, because in my opinion the production of drugs in Colombia for shipment to the United States is nothing other than a terrorist act and I think we can use <coughs> the same reasoning with respect to that that we do with respect to whatever we might do in Lebanon and what we have done in Libya. I now, now, now uh, it's interesting that you use the term surgical strike because that does distinguish between what we did in Libya and what we did in 1965, say, in the Dominican Republic, where we landed the Marines who camped down for a few months, <clears throat> let alone places like Nicaragua. Well, Denver, one man's surgical strike is another man's Yeah, but would a surgical strike uh, be something that could be done within a couple of weeks by our Marines, or <clears throat> are you really talking about the occupation of Colombia for a while? I think it would take months to clean the whole business up, but I mean, it is located in certain discrete geographical areas. I mean, mm -hmm. Medellin, the area around it, and the Guajira Peninsula are the areas in which the production and the, the sort of captains of industry, as it were, live. Mm -hmm. And that's, by the mm -hmm. way, where the, the Colombian government is trying to do something, but they just don't have the power. What makes you think that Barco would, uh, in fact, invite us in? I think if you were to call Barco aside and tell him anyway. we're going in and we'd like a formal invitation, I think he might do it. Uh, there, there's a real problem there because of the um, uh, traditional resentment <coughs> over leaning on America for this kind of thing. They like our money, but they claim they can do it themselves. Well, they can't. I they don't can't. think they can. Mm -hmm. I hope they can. I don't think they can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Th their government is just shot. It's, it's gone. I mean, there are a few brave men left, Virgilio Barco and a couple others, but mm -hmm. you don't know who. In Colombia, it's not a question of whether you've been corrupted. It's a question of whether you're just scared to death, and that's worse. Yeah. In Mexico, it's a matter of corruption. In Colombia, it's just, just fear. <coughs> well, uh, taking it the other, at the other end, uh, at the consumer end, uh, uh, somebody pointed out recently that the income to Colombia from the sale of drugs is equal to one-sixth its income from the sale of coffee. So there's a sense in which we're talking about a discrete uh, number of people who are making huge sums of, uh, uh, of money, but by no means uh, are endangering the economy. I mean, at least we're not endangering the economy of, of, of uh, Colombia by saying we're going to cut this out. But uh, given the porosity of our, of our borders, you're going to have um, a problem locally, i.e. the users. To what extent uh, are the Marines usable here uh, against the casual user, as they call them? They're not usable at all. I no. mean, we, uh, we have our legitimate and necessary <coughs> constitutional protections. The excesses following the war between the states basically turned this country off against the use of soldiers against its own citizens, land is, and I, I agree, I think it's a big mistake, and the, our, <coughs> our ju judicial system wouldn't stand for it. I mean, there are too many prescribed procedures that you have to go through in order to bring someone into the criminal system, and our, our soldiers just couldn't be trained, nor we'd try to do it. It'd be a waste of their time. Well, w w what about uh, guarding the border? Would you consider that a, a, I think a that, military... I think that the amount of energy that's being put into guarding the border right now is probably sufficient. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not, maybe it's the wrong word, it's, it's probably as much as we should do. Now we've got some more high-tech stuff coming in, some better radar and things like that, but I think our energy should be put abroad and I think our energy should be put onto the, the it's not necessarily user, I'm not sure that's the place to go, but it certainly is a low-level trafficker. Mm -hmm. We have a situation right now in which less than 50 percent of the people who cross the border of the United States and are caught with drugs are arrested or prosecuted. Now that, that's 
one of the things that has annoyed the hell out of me over the past couple of years. And when I go to the Justice Department and claim, complain about it, they tell me that I'm crazy. So why? <clears throat> they say they don't have the time, they don't have the manpower. They that might be true, might it? It's not true. The fact of the matter is that if you want to, you can charge everyone coming in with a misdemeanor and a felony. Experience shows that 99% of these people will plead to a misdemeanor, mm -hmm. and then you give them some kind of community service or a substantial fine or something. And that doesn't involve um, too much manpower? Well, it manpower. usually involves manpower on the part of the agents of the Drug Enforcement Administration or of Customs, because they really crank out all the paperwork. The U.S. Attorney's <laughs> Office really just takes a document that was pretty much filled out by the agent, presents it to the court. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it, it would work. I'm going to be interested to see how the Justice Department responds to President Bush's re request or demand, I expect, to go to zero tolerance, which, by the way, was a scheme that I developed, the, the term and the idea, because my suggestion of arresting everybody at the border is exactly what justice has not wanted to do, and in, I read his lips, it sounded to me like George Bush is saying they're going to do it. <clears throat> yeah. Now... Well, it resulted in, in certain disproportions. I mean, some third mate on some ship had a little marijuana, and the whole damn ship was That's right. And that was... The, the Coast Guard screwed it up, mm -hmm. to be perfectly straightforward about it. They, they, that's, mm -hmm. the, there's a good example of the problem with a military organization. Mm -hmm. You give them a set of instructions, and they follow them to the letter, in spite of the fact that them. they may be wrong. Yeah, right, right. And so there, there's a good example of why the military shouldn't be involved in civilian law enforcement. Well, l let me ask you this uh, question. To what extent do you think there is a direct correlation between the amount of money spent and the success against uh, 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 drugs? The, uh, the Democratic critics of Mr. Bush seem to be saying he, he wants to spend only $8.5 billion, and therefore he can't be serious. Does that mean we're serious with 16 billion? I don't think that right. there's, I think it has a symbolic <clears throat> meaning. Mm -hmm. I think that if you say that your drug program is constrained by Graham Rudman, mm -hmm. then what you're saying is that the country's budget balance, balancing problem is more important. Is more important. Yeah. Uh, that's the only significance I see. I think what's more important is the resolve, is the leadership to take some of the tough steps that are in the strategy. But I'm not sure that we're going to take them. I'm not sure that the State Department is going to get tough on the foreign countries. I'm not sure justice is going to prosecute everybody. I'm not sure that Nick Brady is going to get some one of his assistant secretaries to go to a meeting on money laundering and accept some provisions which might expose U.S. banks to being prosecuted abroad. Those are the kinds of decisions that have to be made. And those are the kinds of issues that I think that are senior level bureaucrats, also known as cabinet secretaries, are going to back off on mm -hmm. because they don't <coughs> meet the needs that they have for their particular portfolio. And as far as you're concerned, it's simply an unanswered question whether the uh, 230 million Americans who don't use dope are better served by a treasury secretary uh, and a secretary of state who looks after broad questions of war and peace and international economics that's and the, then by the eight million added. that's why we have a president mm -hmm. he makes those decisions yeah and he sets those <coughs> priorities but i'm not certain where that priority got set yeah and what you and what you're really saying is don't give us the impression that you're assigning this high priority if you don't take the corollary measures exactly and, and that 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 you think is the principal indictment of mr bush's current policy it may be and that's bennett's job Mm -hmm. Bennett is going to have to take that strategy, flush it out, run it through the bureaucracy, and deal with all these people that don't want to do it. Because there are a lot of things in that strategy that they don't like, yeah. and they're going to try to sort of scoot around them. Yeah. And uh, might might uh, Bennett, way down the line, recognizing the futility of the current approach, uh, turn around and come out for legalization? There's no way that any political figure in the United States who wants to stay in office. Unless he wants to run for mayor of Baltimore. I'm uh, not even sure that Schmoke is going to get real. Okay, we're out of time, I'm afraid. Mr. Buckley, it surely is foolish, as you say, to have a list on a piece of paper saying that our most important priority is world peace and our least important priority is drugs. But doesn't Mr. Rab Von Rav have a point, and it's a point that the Reagan-Bush philosophy of government really begets? 
which is that if you want to say something is terribly, terribly important, it means that something else is less important. Yeah. Something else such as not raising taxes, something else such as a foreign debt problem. And the question is, if we're going to make this big fuss about drugs, what are we going to say is less important and put aside? And where should that be on the spectrum of our national <clears throat> interest? Well, I, I think that is, of course, exactly the point. Uh, uh, was it Trotsky who said, who says A must A be? Uh, if you say, under no circumstances, are we going to permit the importation of drugs? Uh, and any country that uh, uh, makes it possible for its citizens to do this is going to become our enemy, and if necessary, we'll send the Marines there. Then, then, th then this is fighting the drug war à outrance. You're throwing all, everything at it. Uh, in, in my judgment, a, a balanced uh, appraisal of uh, requirements uh, and uh, priorities in America does not justify uh, doing what I agree with Mr. Rabb would have to be done if we're going to become serious at that level, which is one reason why I favor the drastic alternative legalization, even while recognizing Mr. Van Rabb is, is correct in saying that uh, politically that makes you sound as though you're pro-drugs, which means that a lot of people have to be educated, but that's been my concern for years. Thank you. firing line is made possible by the financial support of viewers like you and by a major grant from the John M. Olin Foundation, Incorporated. Additional support is provided by the Mobile Corporation, Farley Industries, Incorporated, Monarch Financial Services, Incorporated, Payne Weber, and the Friends of Firing Line. <laughs>